Hi, welcome to Contributor Tutorials. My name is Sean, and today I'm going to show you how to make a head swap. When shooting for microstock, it's good practice to have multiple frames of the same scene. This is especially true if you have more than one model. This ensures that everyone's looking at camera, no one's blinking, and that everyone's facial expressions are perfect. But even then, it can be sometimes hard to get everyone looking at the camera and having the perfect facial expression. But those extra frames can sometimes help act as donors and enable you to salvage an image that otherwise couldn't be used. And I think that's the case here. The three people sitting down look good, but the lady standing up, her facial expression isn't ideal. But a couple of clicks later, we were able to capture this expression, and this is the one that we do want to capture. So I'm going to show you how we can paste this image onto the other one and make it look seamless. The first thing that we need to do is make a selection around the area that we wish to act as a donor and we need to copy that. I'm going to go up into my edit menu and just select copy and we don't need this file anymore so I'm just going to close it. I'm going to head back up into my edit menu and I'm going to paste and as you can see that's pasted the selection that we had made into our original file and it's copied it onto a, a background, a new working layer called layer one. This is going to offer a little bit more flexibility when we're altering this f image. I'm just going to roughly position it into place and just sort of zoom into the area. Now I need to uh, fine tune this image and sort of have it placed a little bit better. And to do that, I'm going to make sure that I have my layer one selected. I'm going to take my opacity and I'm just going to drop it down to somewhere between 50 and 75%. And that'll enable me to see the background image through my uh, donor image up top. Now what I need to do is just sort of position the, uh, the donor image just above the other image and just sort of line it up. And I'm trying for side to side and top to bottom and just trying to make it look right. I think that looks pretty good there. So I'm just going to go back up to my opacity and just bring that up to 100. Now, once we have that done, we, there's a couple different ways that we could uh, create a mask. We could create a mask and use our black paintbrush to paint away the areas that we don't want to see. Or we could take a mask, fill it with black, which will conceal the whole donor area and then use a white, a white paintbrush to reveal the areas that we wish to see. I'm going to choose the latter. So I'm going to create a, a mask and just making sure that my black is on the background. I'm going to hit command delete or control delete on a PC. And that's going to fill my mask with a black, which is going to conceal the donor image. And now I'm going to select a, a paintbrush and I'm just going to make sure that I have my white selected and make sure that I'm in my mask and I'm just going to paint to reveal the donor image and as you can see we're revealing that image now so uh, this is a good time to hide the background image and I'm just going to use the white paintbrush to reveal the donor image and we need to remember the mantra that black conceals and white reveals so I'm just revealing the areas and anytime that we need to switch back we just use X key to switch our palette color. And as you can see, now I'm in a black brush and this is going to conceal some of the areas of the mask. So I'm just going to go in there and just paint away some of those areas that are just going to affect our, our, our final mask. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to enable our background layer. And right off the bat, you can see what's happened is the background layers leading a little bit into our foreground layer. So we need to remove a bit of that. So this is a good time to hide the donor image. And now we're just going to be working on the background image. I'm going to select that now. And now we need to remove a little bit of the top portion of the head and the side. And I think the quickest way to do that is to select the clone brush tool. And I'm just going to sample a little bit of the blue here. I'm just going to draw straight through. And after I've done that, I'm just going to grab my uh, patch tool, make a selection around that area, and just delete it. I'm going to do the same thing for the side of her face. So again, I'm just going to uh, make a, a target selection and then just use my patch tool to just sort of remove that area there. I'm now going to enable my top layer 
And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to preview it before and after. Again, before and after. I think that looks seamless. We don't see any uh, hard lines around her neck or any artifacting up around her head. So I think we've made a seamless edit. The next thing that we need to do is go to our drop down menu and choose flatten image. That'll make sure that the working layer and the background layer are flattened into one. This image is ready to save now. I'm just going to go full frame and again, just pre preview it before and after. Again, I think that looks good. I hope this has been helpful and please check back for more tutorials. Take care.